Hey guys, it's me and I have a tag video for you today. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freak out tag for you and I will list the original creator creators down below. Um, I can't find the original video, um, but it will all be linked down below. And my 2018 video will also be linked below. This is my second year doing the mid-year freak out tag. So let's get started. Hey y'all, it's Jen and welcome to my channel Ifers Inklings. As I said in my intro, we are here to do the mid-year freak mid-year freak out tag. And have my questions right here. I can't find the original video anymore, but I will have everything linked in the description box below. So, question number one. What is the best book you've read so far in 2019? And that is going to be, hands down, Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. Um, five stars, I, best book I've read. Probably one of the best books I've ever read, actually. Question number two is, what is the best sequel you've read so far in 2019? And that is going to be The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakrabarty. Chakrabarty? Chakrabarty? Chakra Bordy. My mouth doesn't want to move right for that for that name. So, uh, hands down, one of the best series I've read. I've given both the first one and the second one five stars. Love them, and I am highly, highly anticipating the third book coming out, I think, later this year, if not in early 2020. Question number three is, what is a new re release you haven't read yet but really want to? For me, that is Fame, Fate, and the First Kiss by Casey West. This came back out in, this came out, not back out, out, I believe in March. Um, Casey West is one of my favorite young adult romance writers. Um, absolutely love her. She actually just came out with another new release last week, I think. So I'm behind. i got to catch up again. Question number four. What is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? And for me, that is going to be Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stivotter. I think that's the name of the book. Anyway, it's the next Maggie Stivotter book. Um, in her, it's the spinoff series for the Raven Boy Cycle. Question number five. What has been your biggest disappointment book this year? And for me, that was Annalise by David Gilham. I got this as an ARC from NetGalley, and I was really super anticipating this book. I, I was really hoping I was going to love it. It is a retelling, a fictionalized retelling of the life of Anne Frank, um, and it's kind of maybe a little bit alternate history type. Um, I was really anticipating it because I love World War II stories. They're some of my absolute favorites, and I just could not get through this book. I ended up DNFing it at like 12%. I absolutely hated the writing style of it. Um, I'm sure it was a great book. Maybe if I had read The Diary of Anne Frank, then I maybe I would have liked it a little bit more, but I just couldn't stand the writing of this one, and I was so disappointed by that. Question number six, what was your biggest surprise of the year? And that was also an arc that I received. Um, the Girls at 17 Swan Street by Yara, I have no idea how to pronounce this, Z-G-H-E-I-B. Um, this book was about a, women who have an eating disorder and they all go to live at 17 Swan Street to get to recover from their eating disorder. Um, it was a very emotional and very heartfelt and heartbreaking story. Um, I absolutely loved it. I ended up giving it five stars and going into it, I was like, mm, maybe, you know, I just was kind of unsure of it. Um, but again, this was a book that I received as an ARC and I am absolutely, absolutely thankful that I was um, picked this ARC up and was approved for it. So definitely go check out The Girls at 17th Swan Street. Highly recommend it. Uh, again, trigger warning though, because it does deal with eating disorders. 
Question number seven is, what is your favorite new author? And that could be either a debut or a new to you author. And I'm going to fudge a little bit on this um, because I originally read the first book by her back in December, um, but I have since read her back catalog and I am absolutely in love with this author and that is Taylor Reed Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins Reed. Um, I just devoured her books in April, May. I read every single one of her back catalog books. Um, the only one I have left to read now is her newest release, which is da Daisy Jones and the Six. And um, I am uh, have actually already started it. So once I finish that, I will be up to date on all of her books. And I just love her. I don't think I've given anything below four stars. Question eight, who's your newest fictional crush? Um, I have a new crush every book I read, so I, I don't know. I don't really have an answer for that one. Question number nine, who's your newest favorite character? And again, I don't really have a newest, oh my God, this is my favorite character ever. Um, I enjoy each story for what it is. I enjoy the characters in it, and then I move on. Question number 10, what's a book that made you cry? Do I have it over here? So, lots of books have made me cry this year. Um, that is just kind of my personality. I really cry easily, whether it's a sad book or a book that is really heartwarming or heartfelt. Um, so, it can be happy tears. It could be sad tears. It could be a combination of all of the above. But, for this question, hands down, Sadie by Courtney Summers. This book had me just sobbing through a good chunk of it. Um, it is such a well-told, yet very sad and book, and it makes you angry, and it makes you, and it makes you sad, and it, there's not really any happy tears in this book, guys, but it is a really good story, and it's very well done. I actually listened to the audiobook of it, and I highly recommend that because it gives it such a different feel and experience because it is the portion of it that is podcasts. Um, it is it sounds like it's a podcast, and that just really enhances the listening experience and the enjoyment of this book if you can enjoy this type of book. So definitely made me cry. Question number 10, what is a book that made you happy? Um, and that book is going to be We Are Still Tornadoes by Michael Kuhn and Susan Mullen. There were some sad parts in this, but overall, this is a really cute YA new adult um, romance story. And it's between two best friends who one of them goes off to college and the other one stays back at home. And they write letters back and forth. This is set in the early 80s and there's a lot of musical references to it so every time they would talk about a new band or a new song it was it was like reliving my junior high days it was a, it was really fun they mention um, Michael Jackson and I think some Madonna um, and several other bands that were real popular like that that came out in the 80s or were really popular in the 80s so it just made me happy it made me kind of nostalgic and um, it is a friends to lovers trope which I love that trope so much. So definitely made me happy. Question number 12, what is the most beautiful book that you've bought so far this year or received? That is going to be this book, 96 Words for Love by Rachel Roy and Ava Dash. And just look how pretty that is. I, every time I was in the bookstore, I was drawn to this cover. And so eventually I just gave in and bought it because look at it, it's beautiful. So, now it's on my shelf to be beautiful. And our final question, question number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, you know, I could just go all of these, but let's talk about some specific books that I need to read by the end of this year. Um, and for specific reasons, specifically my Pop Sugar and or my Book Riot Read Harder challenges that I'm doing. Um, and I'm gonna talk about four, four books. Uh, the first one, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I need to finish this book. I have started it 
I'm um, maybe like 60 pages in, but I definitely need to finish this one, and I really want to finish it. I'm, it's a highly anticipated book for me this year. The next one is The Bone People by Carrie Holm, and this is for a Read Harder Challenge. To read a book written, an own voices book written by someone in the oceanic region. And this is written by, um, it's an Australian Aborigine author, I believe, if I remember correctly. I don't remember exactly what it's about. I checked this one out from my library. Library. And um, so I've got to read it soon because it's due back to the library. So this one is, but um, it's, it's a thick book. And I've heard that it is really sad, um, and it's going to bring out a lot of emotional emo emotions. So, um, yeah, definitely need to read this one. And then also for a reading challenge prompt, and I can't, I think this one is on Pop Sugar. I can't remember. I've got them all confused. But this is My Lady's Choosing. It's an interactive romance novel. Novel? novel by Katie Curran and Larissa Zagers, Zagris. Um, it is a choose your own adventure novel and um, romance based. <laughs> Highly looking forward to this. I have been following along with the Susan Dinner Dinnards. Is that her last name? Dinnards? Um, on Twitter, she's doing a choose your own adventure tweet story that she started in June and um, I am absolutely enthralled. It's the luminaries and um, so that really got me looking for other choose your own adventure books. I now have three of them. I bought three of them. Um, but this is the one I'm going to read for the Pop Sugar Challenge. Everybody that has talked about it has said it was um, real fun. Lots of different things you can do and lots of different paths. Um, I enjoyed reading some of these when I was younger and so I'm excited to dive into this one. And the final book I'm going to talk about today is The Visitation by Jenny Arpenbeck. This is a this is for a Read Harder Challenge, and I don't remember exactly which one I'm going to use it for. One prompt is a book by a non-human narrator, and the other one is a work of literature translated work of literature by a woman, translated by a woman, and this qualifies for both of them, um, but it's a real short book. It's less than 200 pages, less than 150 pages, actually, and um, it is told from the point of view of a house, and it follows, I believe it's four families over um, a hundred-year time period, and the house is telling the story of the families that live there um, or visit this the homestead, and um, I know that part of it takes place during World War II, and the house is in Germany, I believe. Um, so I'm highly, exci highly excited. I'm really excited about this book. I can't wait to dive into it. Um, if I didn't have a million other books that I'm working on right now and needing to get through immediately, I would have already picked this one up. So hopefully I'll get to this in the next couple of weeks because I'm just really excited to dive into it and see what it's all about. It sounds very interesting. Um, so that's it. I am not tagging anybody in this video because this tag itself has been around for a long time and everybody has been doing it. It is like the tag to do in June and July here on BookTube. I'm running a little behind because it's now August when I'm posting this, but if you're new to BookTube and you haven't been around and you haven't already done this, then do consider yourself tagged. Um, and as always, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure and click that thumbs up button for me. It really helps me out. It lets me know that you enjoyed the video as well. And if you're not already subscribed, what you doing? Go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can get more great videos from me. Um, I post two to three times a week and I'd love to have you back at my channel the next video I'll post. Also, be sure and leave a comment down below, even if it's just an emoji or just to say hello. That still allows me to interact with you in the comments and lets me know that you stopped by. Um, and until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye.